Hello, my name is Gower Horton. I'm here, I'm a minister. I haven't done a video in a while, but I'm back. And I'm uh, talking about the divinity of Christ, His identity. Uh, Jesus is God. And this is what the Bible shows. Uh, this is the testament of God about Jesus, that He is God in flesh. We know as Christians that God is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's cults like Jehovah's Witnesses, destructive cults that try to... Um, make God into someone else. Essentially say there is no Trinity, there's God the Father, then there's Jesus, who is his son, who is just a creative being, an angel. And I will break down in a couple minutes the scriptures that show that that's totally false. I don't have a Bible in front of me, but I do have the Bible in my heart, so I can really quote to you exactly what I'm saying, tell you where to go in the Bible, so you'll be able to follow pretty much what I'm saying. Um, Okay, so Jesus is God. Okay, now you look at also the Muslims who claim that Jesus didn't die on the cross, um, Judas died on the cross, Jesus was just a prophet. But again, like I said, I'll break down the scriptures. Let's start with Hebrews chapter 1 1. In Hebrews chapter 1 1, it says that um, of the angels of God, he called them spirits, his ministers of flame of fire. But he says, unto the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever, and thy scepter, scepter of righteousness. Well, this is God the Father talking to Jesus and referring to him as God. That's why as Christians we refer to him as God the Son a lot of times, because it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Again, because Jehovah's Witnesses are taught a false doctrine, from a false book called the Holy Scriptures, which is not even called a Bible, uh, then they are totally confused in the dark about the reality of the Trinity, that God is triune. Also, you look in Genesis 1-1, God says, let us make man our image. Well, he's not talking to angels, because angels can't create. They're just created beings. And uh, if God was going to say, let us, and refer to them as creators, and why would he get mad at Lucifer? Which is also why in a lot of these cults they also try to deify and make angels on a higher level. But that's what the devil wants to do. Make people think the angels are on the same level with God. Angels are not. They're just created beings. They're not even made in the image of God. Man is on a higher level in that respect. We're the only creation made in the image of God. And uh, we sinned, fell away. That's why God became like us. So we could be brought back in relationship to him. This is the way he God always wanted men to be. A special relationship with God that no other creature has. But anyway, um uh, let's deal with um let's deal with John chapter one. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the word became flesh, dwelt among us. Well, okay, he's saying right here that the word became flesh. What is word in Greek? Logos. In other words, he's saying the truth was in the beginning. That truth was with God, but that truth is God. Okay? Then that truth became flesh, it says later in the scripture. And that they bore witness of him, you know. And that through him, it says, we become the children. We are given the power to become the children of God. That's what it says. And that him is Jesus, of course, because this is the a gospel of John, which is about Jesus. So this is talking about Jesus being God. What he's saying is that he is truth, because God is truth. And God was with himself. That's why he says John, and, and in the beginning he says, and the, and the word was with God. But he's saying that the truth was with himself. He's talking about the Trinity here. Okay? God the Son was with God the Father. But he was known as the Word at that time. So he is saying, again, the illustration of the Trinity. Okay? He said, then God the Son, or the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. Not God the Father or God the Holy Spirit, but God the Word became flesh. Now, because he's fully God, because they never separated until the separate when he gave himself on the cross, then even while he was in his earthly ministry, they're all still doing things together. This is why you see in John 
three sixteen. Um, or not 316, but in, in the third chapter, he talks about being born again. And then Nicodemus asked him a question, well, how can a man be born again? And then he asked him, well, how can you as a, you know, leader of Israel not know about these things? You, know, you call yourself a leader of Israel, he said. You have not accepted what we have told you. So he goes into talking in the plural. Now, Jesus is not crazy, okay? He knows it's just him and Nicodemus standing there. And he says, we, what we have told you and what we have revealed to you, you have not heard our witness. But why is he talking the plural here? He's talking about the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's talking about his witness, the Father's witness, and the Holy Spirit. And he's talking in plural right then. It's another time you see the Trinity right in the same thing. It says right there in Colossians that in him the bodily dwells the fullness of the Trinity. Um, it tells you in Colossians 1 that uh, all things in him consist, talking about Jesus, meaning that even matter itself, existence, is in Jesus. Um, and you go back to, let's go back to, uh, I think it's John 1. He said nothing was out, everything was made by him, and nothing was made without him, you know, Jesus. Um, then you look at, I think it's the 17th chapter of Matthew. I have to go back and check on that. Where he says, he asked the Father to glorify him. First of all, man can't ask God to glorify him like that. That means you're either blaspheming if you're just a man. Um, but he says that he's God. And he says, glorify me with the glory I have with you before the foundation of the world. Well, that means he existed before he was physical. And then he goes on to say, Glorify me with thine own self, with thine own being, is what he's saying. He's asking God to literally envelop him in himself. Now, that's really egotistical if you're just a man asking for this. Okay. And you ask, he also said, to, you can't even as a man, other people in Old Testament were killed or something for trying to equate themselves to God. That's blasphemy. For him to say that he can sit alongside God and then also be one with God and enveloped in Him. That is a sin if you're not the begotten Son. See, now a lot of cults try to take from this now and they just want to say these words that he said in general thinking, well, he said it so I can say it. I can say it. I just want to be one with God. But you can't really be one with God unless you're in Jesus. See, none of us are equal with God. I'm not equal with God. I'm only equal through Jesus. I'm only given access to God's presence because Jesus made me righteous through his sacrifice. This is what goes to our other chapter, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, which says, Great is the mystery of godliness. Now we'll get to the next point with that. The mystery of godliness is that God became flesh so that he could fulfill his righteous requirements of the law, which is really, you know, his perfection, his level of righteousness, which we cannot attain to. It's total perfection. Now, one time we were made to be innocent, and God was going to bring us into that, but man decided to give way to Satan. He's twisted his whole nature, so he can't, he can't even understand God. He can't even comprehend righteousness fully in the state that he's in now, a rebellious state, which causes man to, every time God says do something, just do the opposite. Because that's the nature that came from Satan, uh, of rebellion. Now, let me get down to this now. Um, look at my time. <laughs> uh, so, Rebellion equals death because rebellion cuts us off from God's presence. Because God is truth. When we rebel against Him, we're rebelling against His very presence, His very being. Like I said, the Logos. So, God had to become flesh and then uh, do everything we couldn't do, which was laying out by Moses, by God. God gave Him the Ten Commandments and those commandments. He laid out 
to mankind what they were supposed to fulfill in order to be able to stay in relationship with them, but they couldn't do it because they're weak in their flesh. So God himself fulfilled that. Okay, He set up a whole priesthood and all that just so he could come and fulfill it. He could come and fulfill it. And then they always had to have animals that died for the people because of their sins. Okay, Jesus came and because animals could not really pay the penalty for a man. Okay, oh, that's why they had to keep dying over and over again because it's not just because they were sinning over and over again, that's that's part of it, but also because the animals had no way of actually paying for the sins of mankind. They, they're not even equal with man, so they can't really pay for it, get it? So God had to become a man to die in mankind's place. And God had to then put judgment on this man and he had to take judgment for every sin. But also he had to be powerful enough to be able to take it. No angel could do it because they didn't have the power. No man could do it because they weren't righteous and they couldn't they couldn't then become a mediator between God and man because they weren't righteous. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, great is the mystery of God in this first Timothy chapter three. He says that God was manifest in flesh. It tells you right there, God was manifest in flesh. Then he says that he was justified in the spirit. And then he goes on to say, witnessed by angels. Well, what does it mean justified in the spirit? If he's God, why does he have to be justified? Well, again, because he was taking our place. He became a man. He says, it says another scripture, I think it was in Philippians. It says, seeing himself in the image of sinful flesh, he humbled himself as a servant even to the death of the cross. So once God was encased in this flesh, and then he was living totally as a man, and his glory was left in heaven, he found himself in this flesh. That's supernatural right there, because God knows everything. So that means the other persons of the Trinity had allowed him to be stripped of some knowledge of that, because he said he found himself in human flesh, he had to give himself, he had to purposely, uh, you know, grow as a man and, and, and do all these things as a man. Eat. He didn't feed himself as a baby. He had to learn things. I mean, he had to purposely cast off some knowledge because he knew all things just so he could learn and do it like a man. But yet he overcame. He said, yo, yet though he was tempted always, yet look. With, like us yet yeah, without sin. Then he, this is a miracle of it all. That's why I said it's a mystery of godliness. That God was manifested in flesh. This is too much for some people to handle. And the devil makes sure you cannot handle it because if you regress this and believe and say this with your mouth that I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins, rose from the dead, Jesus is Lord, then you're saved. He knows that. So what he does is make it seem so hard for people to grasp. How could God do that? But you see, God can do anything. He can do anything but fail. So it's not a hard thing for God to manifest in the flesh. But it was, and it is an impossible thing for us to become God. It's impossible for us to get right with God or to get to his righteous level. But God, it's not impossible for God to lower himself. And that's what God decided to do. He decided to Lord put himself in this body like ours and to die on the cross. That's the gospel message. And he did miracles to, just to show you who he was, to reveal who he really was, walking on water, raising the dead, uh, healing the sick, and of course, dying himself and then coming back from the dead. Uh, I mean, he opened blinded eyes, deaf people, paralyzed people, all that stuff. But he always would glorify the Father because he had to do it as a man. But this is the greatest miracle, that he fulfilled that. That he never once took glory, even though he was worthy of the glory. And when they did praise him, he didn't deny it, because that would be lying. He is worthy of the glory. But he would always defer as a man. He says finding himself equal with God, he still did not find it as something to be grasped. 
That means he purposely had to yield his will and give all the praise to God the Father as a man would have to do purposely so that he could be counted as a man. Therefore, he could fulfill the righteousness for us and God could say there was one man that did right. I hope you follow me. But all men sinned. Everybody messed up. Past, present, future. You can't do it. I don't care how many times you think you're doing it. You're not doing it. You're never going to do it. Because God would have said in the Bible, everybody but Jimmy sinned. Everybody but this person made it. I mean, or everybody sinned except for this one person. No, Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ, has ever fulfilled the law and destroyed Satan's uh, snare on humanity. The wages of sin is death. So, I'm trying to break it down to you now. The scriptures I mentioned, 1 Timothy chapter 3, go look at that. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, 1. And study these scriptures and realize that cults like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, uh, Islam, all these things are teaching lies to people. So what would be the goal and why would be, it's not that the people themselves ever want to lie. They don't know what they're doing. But they are the devil. And he knows what God's standard is. And he knows that God said in the Bible, because he reads the Bible, he knows that God's word says that if anyone denies that Jesus is the Christ, if they deny that he's God in flesh, they deny that he died on the cross for their sins and rose from the dead, then he has them. He has that soul. So it's all about a battle for your spirit, where you're going to spend eternity. That's why I'm here talking, because I want some people right now who will just do this with me, bow your heads. Say, I be, I, Lord Jesus, no, I'm a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe that you're God in flesh. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just say that one prayer, you will spend eternity in heaven and not in hell. Yeah, there's a lot of voices out there saying, yeah, how do you know it's hell? How do you know it's hell? I don't, know. I don't believe in God. Let those people go. Let them be crazy. But you be the one that made sense. You be the one that heard the truth. Now, I don't know if he died on the cross. I don't know if he did this. You know what? Let them go on. They'll find out. They'll find out. It's a matter of time. That's all. Just a matter of time. Strong witnesses, Mormons, Islam, blah, 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 cults, they will all find out it's only a matter of time. I ain't got to do nothing to them people. I ain't got to physically get, get angry with them. I'm not angry with none of them, but they will find out. It's going to be sad, but they're going to find out. As he said, and many will say, Lord, Lord, they will come in my name, but they will, he said, I'm going to say I never knew them because they are preaching another gospel. It tells you in Galatians, it said they preach another gospel. Let them be accursed. Even if an angel from heaven, like Muhammad claimed, an angel from heaven came, like the guy who started Mormonism, Joseph Smith, claimed that an angel from heaven came in. Those were demons. And those doctrines they gave him were from the demons. And now the demons' doctrines are being passed out throughout the, all the whole world. Door to door. In fact, a lot of the times Jehovah's Witnesses and this person came to your door. Probably asked you to come take their little pamphlet. But what's in that pamphlet? What are they really teaching? Is it the Bible? No. Do they believe in the cross? Do they believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ as salvation for all can't make that no? They don't even believe in hell. They don't believe in eternal hell. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in any of that. They're totally teaching a totally different gospel. And what did the Bible say about that? Let them be accursed. That's not me saying that. That is God Almighty saying that. This is nothing to play with. Your money can't get you out of hell. Fame can't get you out of hell. Your intelligence, your feelings, your works that you've done are not going to get you out of hell. Only one way that you can get out is Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. So accept him today, for real. Excuse me, I didn't do a lot of music on this. You know, I know everything ain't perfect in my background or whatever. But let me tell you.
This is the real deal, y'all. Hear me what I say. As long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. But if you got everybody else without Jesus, it doesn't matter. Because he said, what does it matter to gain the whole world? But lose your own soul. For real, though. Peace.